where we erase the words that everybody took. And I'm not sure if you can hear me, but we, we can uh, we're going to show perfectly. them. We're going to show you the worms in a little bit. So all our composting are in this side, and then they can see the yard waste piles, wood wet pile, construction and demolition and everything. Great. And we also have Darlene with us. Darlene, did you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, like she mentioned, my name is Darlene and I um, do similar things as Estela. I work a lot with schools and normally we would go out and do presentations on recycling and composting. Um, so I'm glad you're at least getting the opportunity to learn about it virtually. Uh, so yeah, like Estela said, we're here at the garden and um, we hope that some of the worms that we gave you are still alive. <laughs> uh, you'll be watching a virtual tour that we recently uh, worked on. We're working on more virtual tours. Has, has, I'm just curious, have any of you actually been to one of our sites already, either the transfer station or the landfill? If you guys you can want to do raise a your little up. hand on there if you want. Yeah. yeah, thumbs up. If you've ever been to the Sun Street transfer station or even the Gonzales landfill, because we do have students from Gonzales. Nice, yeah, it's just always nice to know like who's already familiar or not. Um, just the start. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we're gonna just go through a little tour here. Let me see. All right, let me see. Can you guys hear the music here? Yes. Yes, okay, then we're good to go. No, we can't hear. But where does all this garbage go? Sorry. And who can we count on to handle this logistical nightmare? Enter Salinas Valley Recycle. These are the people that take care of properly disposing of all of your Perfect. garbage. Now, how do they do it? Let's take a tour around one of their facilities, the Johnson Canyon Landfill. Hello, my name is Patrick Hathaway, General Manager with the Salinas Valley Recycles Organization. Here at the Johnson Canyon Landfill, located two and a half miles east of the city of Gonzales. This is where all the Salinas Valley refuse and recycling materials go uh, prior to processing or landfilling. So at this landfill, we can do lots of different things besides garbage. Behind me, you'll see our recycling center where we handle basic everyday recycling materials such as appliances, paper, cardboard, construction debris, uh, you name it, we can handle it here at the landfill. Here at the Johnson Canyon landfill, we spend over $200,000 a year cleaning up litter and illegal dumping across the Salinas Valley. So it's very important when you come and make a visit to our facilities that you cover and secure your loads before you come. We want to reduce litter and prevent uh, materials from flying out of your trucks when you're on the site. Helps us save money, put more of our money towards services for you. So I actually wanted to pause it right there real quick. Um, there's actually some questions that I was gonna suggest you guys follow along with. Um, let me see here. Did you guys get that email? Hold on. You know what, since we're already in it, we will just probably ask you the questions when we're done here. All right, here we are in front of our cardboard and rigid plastic recycling area. So if you're a business or a homeowner and you have a lot of extra plastics, tiny pots, uh, and other kids' toys, as well as all of your old cardboard and your shipping materials, you can bring them here free of charge. Welcome to the 
the Johnson Canyon ABOP. ABOP stands for antifreeze, battery, oil, and paint. If you have leftover automotive batteries, household batteries, rechargeable batteries, uh, motor oil, antifreeze, or latex paint, you can bring them here free of charge seven days a week. Here you are at one of the most popular areas of the MRC, Materials Recovery Center, Johnson Canyon Landfill. Here you could bring your old and used mattresses and box springs, used tires, and electronic waste, including television, old recording equipment, computer equipment, and anything electronic. Here we are at the used clothing and textile donation area of our MRC. In this area, you can bring your used clothing, bedding, towels, and other textiles. The clothing will be cleaned and redistributed to low income and the rest of the material will be repurposed for other types of textiles. We're at the Johnson Canyon Landfill Gas to Energy Plant, operated by Amoresco. Amoresco is our agency partner in this project. So as you may know, the garbage you throw away in the landfill, food, the organic material, as it starts to decompose in the landfill, it generates methane. Across the entire landfill, we have hundreds of wells dug into the garbage that actually extract that methane and brought down here to the power plant where it's converted into electricity. This plant can produce 1.5 megawatts of electricity output. That is enough electricity to power a thousand to fifty million homes year round. This is an exciting project in an exciting way to treat everything that comes to this landfill, including the methane coming from your garbage. Welcome to the Johnson Canyon landfill. What you see behind me is module seven. Landfills are typically built in pieces of what we call modules. This is the seventh module of and plant modules in this facility. This is the largest construction constructed module that we have. This one will last us approximately six years for interim life. And down the road, once all the modules are built, we'll again go back on top of the entire site and do additional filling. Is the video lagging for anybody? Is it just you guys, Estella? It might be because you're outside. It's lagging a little bit. But it's not too bad. I think honestly, we're just gonna have to play it this way. It works. Yeah. Fill out the remaining life of the site. A modern landfill is made of many, many layers. It starts with well compacted soil, popped off the clay and then what we call geosynthetic clay liner, which is a very, very fine powdery substance that is wedged between fabric and provides a lot of protection from water leaving that landfill. On top of that goes a six mil layer of polyethylene plastic used and seen across the entire 10 acres of site. I'm going to go into a zoom in. It's a drain flare placed on top that allows the bottom of the landfill to collect any liquids that are leaving the landfill. Those liquids are called leachate, and they collect at the base of the landfill and are pumped up into a storage container. On top of that drainage layer goes two feet of protective soil, which protects the underlying multi layer liner system from being punctured by garbage, sharp objects, or wood. Once that's completed, then the landfill can begin accepting all types of materials for disposal. The current landfill has between 30 and 35 years of remaining life. The area to my right, the large hill behind me, two fold or, or module seven that you're looking at, that is our last remaining landfill area. It is almost its final height, but there again will be some additional garbage placed on that at the end of the landfill's life. The six modules we've already completed represent those last 40 to 50 years of operation.
Here we are on top of Module 3, one of the older areas of the Godless Canyon landfill. I'm standing on over 150 feet of garbage. If you live in the Salinas Valley, I'm standing on something you've thrown away over the last 20 to 30 years. When we receive your garbage here, we do several things with it. The idea is to take your garbage, we spread it out in very thin lips of about two feet thick, and then we roll it over with a giant compact. Compactor is a giant piece of equipment with large, heavy feet that weighs over 140,000 pounds. That drives back and forth over the garbage, pressing it and packing it, allowing it to get one of the highest densities uh, possible in this industry uh, of 16 feet. Oh, my goodness, sorry. Trying to put the caption uh, Possible in this industry uh, of 16, 1700 pounds for every cubic yard of airspace. So to conserve that airspace, after we're done placing your garbage in the work day, we cover the landfill with tarp. That preserves space instead of using the soil, which is the traditional old fashioned way. Every seven days, though, we will come back over that fresh garbage and we'll place six to 12 inches of soil. The area we're standing on right now Area that is what we call interim close. That we're not going to be back up here and placing garbage probably for the next 30 or 40 years. Uh, at that point, uh, when we close the site for long term, we'll actually place at least two feet of soil. So this area we're sitting on right now has about two feet of cover soil on it, and it's going to stay in place and look like this uh, for the next uh, several decades until we're ready to come back on top and begin filling the final lift of the landfill, which is the top deck area we're standing on. All right, the area behind me is our organic stormwater pond. This is the area that collects stormwater and water that's coming off of our composting and organic preparation area. This pond is lined with the same plastic material that we use to line the land. All right, so it looks like it's kind of lagging. Probably even worse when we turn the captions on. Um, we can stop it right there and maybe we can have Darlene, if you have the video available on your computer. I'm going to go ahead and make you a host if that's okay. I wasn't sure if you'd go ahead. I, I wasn't sure if you would be able to hear it. Let me know if there's audio. There is not any audio right now. There it goes. You can hear it a little bit, but you might need to turn it up a lot. Where does all this garbage go? And who can we count on to have you hear it or not? Just to nightmare? Not in this one. It doesn't sound. A little bit. Can you guys hear it, students? Can we get a thumbs up if you can hear it? I think you can share your audio. Um, mm -mm. In, in the share screen option. Do you see that there? On your, it's going to be on your computer in the share screen option. It's probably not going to work then. It's because I was trying to remote into the office because it's saved into the office, but it's probably with the audio in there. When you get a chance to test, if it's not working, it probably won't. Okay. So I think we can end it there i guess if it's too crazy of a lag i know we tried to get this um the video to you guys and maybe we can have you guys watch it later um but so far we've learned about um the johnson canyon landfill um does anybody remember what their energy project was what what they were converting into energy anybody? Starts with an M. Methane. Say that again. Methane. 
Methane gas. That's correct. And Jarlene and Estella, did you want to share a little bit more about the video that we, the last part of that that we missed? Uh, what was up there? So he was talking about the landfill and the different liners and, and about how, you know, we're, we only have 35 years left on one of those. Um, it was a composting and packager. Do it because I was... Okay, so, um, sorry, I was trying to get the video stuff figured out, so I didn't see exactly where you stopped, but um, I think that we covered the ABOP, which was the antifreeze, batteries, paint, oil area. Um, we also covered the recycling center, which we call the MRC. That's when you first go into the landfill, the first thing you see. We covered the waste to energy, and uh, I think the module, did we cover module mm -hmm. seven? Yes. Which is where all of the trash gets buried. That's the, the open face that we call. Um, there was also an area in there uh, where we have a closed, which was the, the module that we were working on previously, which right now is what we call interim closed, meaning that in the meantime, it'll we won't be adding garbage to it, but once all of the new cells are completed, we'll go back and add more layers on top. And then uh, I think the area that you didn't get to see is what we call the depackager. The depackager and the uh, aerated static pile, which are our two newest areas. And it's where we compost. So we have yard waste that comes in and um, food waste. So with the depackager, we have a uh, a lot of the packaged produce that doesn't make it to the market or that is recalled rather than sending it to the landfill, uh, this machine separates the food waste, like for example, the lettuce, the spinach um, that you see in salad bags, and it separates the plastic. The plastic alone goes to landfill. All of the food waste that uh, we recover with this machine becomes kind of like a salsa, this slurry that uh, we then mix with the yard waste uh, that has been ground up and it becomes compost. And so in the aerated static pile, we have uh, these big pipes that blow air through it. So I don't know if you're familiar at all with compost, but normally there's what we call windrows and there's tractors that will turn the, the windrows um, every so often. But with our system, it doesn't need that. The, the air that gets blown through those pipes does all that work. So there's no need to go and turn the piles. It just gets air blown into it and it makes it compost faster. And so uh, if I'll, I'll put the, the link in the chat so that you can watch the tour on your own without the lag, but you'll get to see that as well as the stormwater pond um, and trying to think what other area we no missed. they watched the storm oh you do watch yes. the pond um i think that was the, the i think that thing. was the the main thing at the end how the depackager works and uh composting the conventional way right because uh what you learned about with the worms is vermicomposting so there's two different types of compost that we talk about uh which is that would be more of a commercial commercial composting because it's on a large scale. And so once that compost is done, it'll go back to the farmers that grow our food. Whereas, so, um, sorry, I didn't know if you could hear me with the noise in the background. Whereas the compost you learned about with the worms and the backyard compost that doesn't use worms, is uh, what well, you can do at home with your own food waste and yard waste. We're gonna show it right now. Perfect. And students, if you remember in your packets, I sent you um, information about the deep packer and it's actually really innovative um, how they're taking it apart from packaging just so that they can compost it. Because otherwise, what they were doing before, if I'm correct, is just burying 
the way the food waste into the landfill and causing um, well, causing more methane and greenhouse gases, which is definitely something we don't want. Yeah. So if you haven't looked at that flyer, definitely take a look at that. Yeah. So um, I'm pasting the link right now. And maybe Letty can share it in an email later if she hasn't already for you to, to watch that tour video. And um, I guess in the meantime, we can answer questions or um, out of what you watched so far or the information we provided beforehand, if you reviewed any of it. Does anybody have any questions about the landfill? I have a question. Do you guys have any plans to add more to the landfill, different projects or learning centers or? Yeah, we do want to build an outdoor classroom where I want Letty, you to be in charge so we can do, <laughs> so we can do like testing, like, like composting testing basically. So in a lot of areas of the landfill, where you can uh, <clears throat> where you can add compost every every year, and you can test if the soil is improving or not. Yeah, and that could definitely be like a student led project um, with farm students doing some of the testing of the soils and getting your hands dirty. Letty and I, and, and if they don't have any other questions, we can give them like a tour, virtual tour or the <clears throat> our compost things and they can see some of the equipment that is very noisy and they can see the piles. <clears throat> Does anybody have any additional questions? Samantha? Um, how long can the, um, worms live in the container that was provided for us? Oh, uh, the lifespan of each worm is about two years. So, but um, if you take care of them really good, instead of having a hundred, you're gonna have like 3000 within the next six months. So the more worms you have, the more they're gonna eat your food scraps. So you need about 2000 worms, 2000 is about, a handful like this to eat one pound of food waste. So the more worms you have, the more they're gonna eat. So I'm gonna show you three worm bins that we have here. So they're a little bit bigger uh, scales and uh, I guess that the rest of the people has at home so you can see how they're doing. Great question, Samantha. <clears throat> Do you have another question, Samantha? Go ahead. Yeah, um, I think I heard in the video or someone mentioned that the the recycle thing would on, would only last a few more, not a few, but only so many years. Why is that? Oh, yeah, the landfill is only, we only have 40 years left of garbage capacity because we are putting a lot of more stuff in the landfill and we're recycling less. So our landfill has about 40 years left and after it's closed and we put all the garbage that we need to put, then we need to put our garbage somewhere else. So we're thinking a lot of, a lot of the garbage from California is gonna go to maybe Nevada or Arizona in the, maybe like 50 years from now, 60 years from now. So it's very important for us to recycle and reduce and reuse and compost. So we can leave, we can leave a space for our future generations. So yeah, that's one of the things that, uh, the reason why it's so important for us to educate, for example, like this, you know, uh, is because a lot of people don't really think about trash, you know, they'll just throw it away and it's, gone and it disappears and it's whatever but there's 
you know, it's really important actually to think about our actions. So when we're buying things to be informed consumers, so really thinking about what you need and whether at the end of you using that, if it can be reused, repurposed somehow, um, or if it can be recycled, if it can be composted, because when, you know, so many people aren't really thinking about it and just throwing everything away, ultimately we still pay the price because even if you are not directly, you know, somebody's paying and it's all going to our environment, right? So um, you can not only save money by doing these things because it reduces the garbage bill, um, but it ultimately our goal is to prolong the lifespan of our landfill. So rather than filling it up in five or six years at this rate, you know, if people start being more proactive and thinking about what it is that they're sending uh, to the landfill, then maybe it can last us 10 years, 15 years, you know, and gives us more time to uh, come up with solutions and other ways to recycle things. Because right now, not everything is recyclable, right? Just because something's made of plastic, it doesn't mean that there's a market for it. So it allows more time for more markets to develop to be able to make other products out of things that currently may not be recyclable. Any more questions before we uh, give you a garden tour? All right. I think we're ready to see the garden and some of their larger size vermicompost things. Can I take this? Maybe just if you maybe spin it first, and we go to the composting so they can see the tractor, they can see the yard waste. I don't know if you can. I don't want to make you guys dizzy. I don't know how slow or fast to go. We'll give you a little overview and then we'll go one by one, sort of. So, okay. so maybe show them our race bit here. So we have, uh, can see, I guess, yes. So these are our race beds here. Just turn it like this. And then, maybe what? Can you share a little bit about the history of the garden, Estela? You said you share a little bit about the history of the garden. Okay. The truck was, the truck was passing by. <laughs> so that, that big truck that you see there, that's when it's full of compost. And all of that compost is the one that is coming from the landfill in Gonzales. So if you guys ever, if you want to grow more worms, you're definitely going to need a larger container. And uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. So this is quite this large, but. This is a large worm bin. And then um, it's just going to pull some out. This is where your worms came from, everybody. <laughs> let's see if we have a lot of them here. Is the camera good there? Um, yeah, but I'll show it to them. So it looks like they're hiding from me, but you can see everything that I have here. All of this used to be food waste. And then, let me see, I just want to show you a handful of worms. But it's hard to see. Okay, right here. So if you can see here, I don't know if you see all of the worms, but this is, this is where we raise, basically where we raise worms, not a lot, but enough to share with the public, whoever is ready. So this is one system that we have. And then there's another one here. This is another version here. And then. Not sure if you're able to see it's hard to see, but there is a lot of decomposers here. 
So these white things that you see here, those are the spring tails. So those are decomposers too. And we do have a lot of roly polys. Let's see if I can find them. Here are some of the roly polys here. Those are the those are great decomposers too. Um, sorry to interrupt, but um, yeah. I have a question. Um, yes. How long does it take for the worms to repro reproduce? Um, usually, if they're adult, they're gonna have babies within like three weeks, and then the more I will show you something. Wait, let me show you something. So this is look up for this and you got it. So you go to the other bin? Yeah. Let, let me see if I see. Let me see if I can show you an egg. So I think there's some right here. You saw them? I think isn't that okay right here. There is one up in my head. So I'm not gonna, I'm not sure if you see this, but this is the worm cocoon here. So inside this little egg, right here, this one, it has two to five little babies. So if you have a lot of these eggs and your worm and you composting system, that means you're gonna have a lot of little worms. Okay, and each one of them, as I told you, they live about around two years if they have the right environment. So the more the more they eat, I mean, not the more they eat, but the more that you take care of them, the more worms you're gonna have. So that's one. So the other system that we have is, I don't know if you can see this one. This is what we call it a backyard comp composting. For this one, you can put all the, all the uh, grass cl clipping and all everything that you have in your garden where you're cleaning out the yard. And this one, the only thing that, that we recommend is for you to add water. And I know it looks like it's dry and nothing is decomposing. It is decomposing, but if you go through the middle of the pile here, you can see already some finished composting. So here, so that's, and you can see some of the decomposers like the roly polies and there's probably a lot more, but but you can see here. So that's one that's one system. And when everything is done, you finish compost. It's supposed to look like this. Look. But you finish comp compost not using the worms. This is how how it's supposed to look right here. Okay. You can also have another backyard composting system like this. So in this one, you just add all your yard waste here and you just put water and you can harvest your finished compost from the bottom here. So you can see, I open, this is like a little window. It goes up and down. Is the camera pointed right? Uh, yes. Okay. And then look, this is your beautiful compost that came from, that came from the yard waste. And actually right here, there's a lot of cocoons too because even though you don't put worms in this type of system, they come to your composting. Even if you don't put worms, again, they come to your composting system. I don't know, Letty, if it was good to show, but this is all we have. We have this raised bed that we call it a root deal box, so you can actually see the roots of the plants and learn, learn from them, and then, um, we have arts with tires here. We have another one. So we, we tried around our garden to um, repurpose some items from the landfill. So as you notice here, right, there's tires, there's a toilet seat that wasn't being used anymore. So we tried to repurpose different things uh, in our garden. Over here, you'll see we repurposed the bathtub and we used it as a raised bed. Can you see it? Uh, 
and uh, here's some old, more raised beds that we have. So we have some peppers over here. We have some herbs. Um, we've got. Don't show them the river bread. The dry potatoes and flowers, tomatoes. We had artichokes and we used to have compost workshops and um, people could paint rocks. So here on our little riverbed, you see a lot of painted rocks that people decorated. And again, the tires, you notice you can make them into nice designs. And we have this big a fig tire. tree. So there's some more tires there waiting for us to make them into uh, art. Art. I, well, yeah, I guess more raised beds. Oh, so this is Jardín el Sol. I don't know where you can see. There? No, up. So that's the entrance to our garden. When you first come in, that's what you see. Now we'll just go back. Students, do we have any additional questions about the compost or your vermicompost um, farm? I know some of you were wondering about specific bugs that you saw and whether they were normal to have. it just depends on how much you're adding at a time because when you are starting off with a little bit of worms you have to kind of wait uh, for them to keep reproducing before they can handle a lot of food otherwise it might start to smell so on on average um, a worm like a pound of worms will eat double what it weighs so if you have a pound of worms you can add two pounds of food if you give too much, it can't keep up with it, but you also don't want to starve them. So you kind of just have to monitor um, the proportions of how many worms do I have and do they need more food? Uh, does that make sense kind of? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other questions? So as, as you notice, you saw the two types of bins, like I mentioned at the beginning, you have the backyard compost bins, which don't necessarily need worms. The decomposers will come on their own and it'll take a little bit longer, but you'll still get compost like Estela showed you. And then the other ones, which are our um, vermic compost, which is composting with worms. And those need just the special care because of the living, the, the worms, right? They have to make sure that they're getting everything they need. Um, but other than that, they're pretty similar. You have to add water, make sure that there's enough air, and um, you add your green material and your brown material, which um, is two of the basic elements. We call our, our browns are carbon rich and our greens are nitrogen rich. So you need a combination of those to have good compost. And we keep them covered just to make sure that we're not getting rodents or other pests coming in and um, we can have clean compost. So I had a question actually about how you guys fund your projects. Is it just by residents paying for their garbage? No, we, we call it tipping fee, is the people who come to our transfer station. So when they, uh, the line right now, when we were started the, the meeting, it was going all around. So we usually get about 300 cars per day here at Sun Street. So when they come, they pay 
for the garbage that they're bringing, that they're bringing home, from home. And that's how we get our money. We call it tipping fee because you pay for your garbage and that's how we finance all of our programs. Yeah, so in the beginning when I was mentioning that it's gonna, even if it's not costing you, it costs someone, that's because uh, it's a service, right? Just like you pay for electricity, you pay for water, um, there is a garbage disposal fee as well. So if you live like in an apartment complex or you rent, a lot of times landlords will pay those fees. Other times, like let's say you own a home, you have to make sure that you're paying these. When you see the waste hauler, which is like the garbage trucks that go by, um, that's a service, right? So there's a fee for the service. And there are some people who don't pay a hauler, but then they have to make sure that they're self hauling, which means they're, uh, taking the garbage themselves. So we have a lot of people who come in um, maybe because they have a landscaping business. And so they're always bringing in their yard waste or uh, some people who just, like I said, they don't wanna pay somebody to pick up their garbage. So they'd rather bring it themselves. It's mostly people who are cleaning the backyards or cleaning some extra garbage, the one who comes. And that's how they pay for our programs. Uh, we do get a little bit of money from um, from the franchise agreement, which is like Republic Services, Tri-Cities, Waste Management, for burying the garbage at the landfill. But here, here at this uh, the Sancho Transportation, we don't bury garbage. So the garbage comes here, it makes one stop, and then from here, all everything that you saw, it goes to Johnson Canyon Landfill. And how do, how do ag businesses or farmers use your guys' services? Um, it's mo most, mostly all of them, they have to comply with the law. Like right, right now in the next few years, everybody in the Salinas Valley, they're gonna be able to now not only separate garbage, recycle, yard waste, now they're gonna be able to separate food waste. So, and that's because of the law, the AB 1826, that's the one that everyone has to comply and that's the organic law and the ab 341 that's the recycling law sb 1383 that's another organic law that mostly everybody businesses public entities that means the schools churches uh and the public regular customers we all have to comply with those law mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think we still have a little bit of time. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to watch that video, but I did send you guys all some, some questions. If you want to complete uh, the tour and check out the, the end of it, I think the last part of it was, was kind of the most exciting part because of the D packer. And so definitely take a look at that. Um, and Maybe we can talk a little bit more about that um, the next time we meet in our leadership meetings. Yeah, I, I'd like to hear from some of the students something that they learned or found interesting, because I know this is a topic that you don't really learn elsewhere. So, um, I mean, it's a little different format now that we're not at the schools. When we're at the schools, we usually do a full length presentation and we focus more on recycling, on how to compost and how to start your compost piles and um, the landfill and everything. And I actually, we, I, we did create a distance learning page in which I uh, have some videos on these topics. If you're curious and wanna learn more, I did, I did link that on, in the chat. It's on our website and it's under schools and distance learning. But uh, yeah, I mean, before we head out, uh, I mean, if you have feedback or like I mentioned, if you wanna share something that you learned or found interesting, I, I would love to hear that. All right, if, we, if you want, we can just go around um, unless we have some volunteers here. Um, I thought it was very interesting that you guys are focusing on converting the methane from all the um, trash and waste into electricity. That was pretty cool. Thank you. Anyone? Samantha? Oh, go ahead. Um, what I found interesting is how um, how kind of easy I guess it is to 
um, transform our trash, I guess, because um, I never really learned about how to decompose and all these different things, so that's what I found interesting. Sorry, what was that last part? You never learned about how to what? Decompose our, um, or turn our, what is it called? Turn our garbage or like, I don't know what to call it. Like yard waste and food waste? How it decomposes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a natural process, right, that happens, but nobody really teaches you about it unless you're really seeking it out i mean it's it's like if you think about it with the leaves right when they fall off the tree eventually they disappear like sometimes they'll make you rake them right and put them in the in the yard bin but other than that nature kind of takes care of its own and and it's us like with the products that we created that are not natural that kind of disrupted that natural cycle and so everything we can do to help kind of bring that back into what we call a closed loop is what makes the difference because nature can't keep up at the rate that we're going. <laughs> it looks like Shay has a question too. Shay, did you want to ask your question? You can just unmute yourself there. Yeah, I was wondering, like, when did you guys, like, know that you wanted to start doing this? Like, when did you first realize you wanted this to be your, one of your jobs? Um, for me, it was kind of a random thing, to be honest. I have always loved community education, but I actually went to college for the health sciences. So um, I kind of just stumbled upon this, but the more that I learn about it, the more passionate I become. And it really is important for, I think, everybody to, to know the impacts that we have. Um, so I've, I've just been on the job for a year and every day I learn something new. There's things constantly changing and, um, I mean, it's, it's been, it's been fun and yeah, I mean, I just like to, to share the knowledge with everyone else because I think it's important. So I'll let Estella share. Okay. I got into this job, this is like 12 years ago. I used to work for the city of not knowing everything that in it that it entitled but it's been a great experience because um we didn't know what we were doing at the beginning but uh now we do have a lot of programs for the community all on reduce reduce recycle and compost and um and yeah we just work on project like we would like for you guys to participate in this project that we want that we want to build a johnson canyon and a study now the compost and um, the garden, like the garden, uh, we always wanted to have a demo garden. We, uh, we told our managers and supervisors that we needed an outdoor classroom. And one day they said, Estella, we have a spot for you. And when I saw the spot, I said, oh my God, this is ugly. Cause it was just weeds. It was nothing here. Uh, I designed the plan of how the garden is going to look, what the race beds are going to be, the pergola, and everything else. And now we've been here with this garden for almost five years, teaching people how to compost. So, so it's never impossible. I don't have the education that Darlene has, but I do, I do have knowledge on all of the other stuff. Didn't you do the ALBA program? The I did, training did the program? ALBA program for nine, ma nine months and I knew how to raise uh, basically organics, everything related with organics um, produce, is that what it's going to call? Yeah. And that's the reason when I took that class, because I already knew how to make compost. I already had the worms in the backyard here at the garden. So I just needed to connect between adding compost into the plants and how to raise them so and then after the, the after i took the plot that class then we started to plan and make the raised beds here yeah and then we were sharing the knowledge and the worms with letty for a long time yeah so um you learn a lot on the job i feel like i learned so much from estella she She's humble. She doesn't want to say, but she knows a lot. And she's taught so many people here in the Salinas Valley. 
So we're just happy to keep sharing the knowledge, mentoring. If you have any questions at any point, um, you can always feel free to contact us. And I just want to also mention, since you are all still young and probably trying to decide your career paths, keep an open mind. Uh, I made the mistake of like early on setting, like it's good to have goals, don't get me wrong, but I kind of closed myself off by thinking very narrowly about what I wanted to do. And there's such a large world out there to explore. I'm glad you're doing programs like this that expand your mind and opportunities, you know, networking, trying to know what's out there because it's hard to know what you're going to do with your life when you don't even know everything that exists out there. I never imagined I would be doing this, but I've enjoyed it more and learned so much more than when I was so focused on, you know, my, my college major. I was pre-pharmacy. I was going to be a pharmacist and I actually went to a year of pharmacy school and I realized it wasn't for me so I've just been working to pay off my debt <laughs> but you know I realized early on it wasn't really what I was passionate about and I decided to at that point open up my my mind to other fields and it's been rewarding it's been fun to explore so just keep an open mind is what I would advise yeah let, let the end before we end up the meeting I just want to tell all your students to tell their parents or everybody we're gonna open a new program in the next probably in the next month and a half so we're gonna have a composting workshop english and spanish and then we're gonna have a summary so basically we're gonna tell people to watch the video answer like 10 questions and then they can win or actually they can choose be between a worm bin and a backyard composting for free so if they choose to do the worm composting, we're gonna give them the worm bin and we're gonna give them the worms just by watching the video and answering the, the questions. So to make sure they're ready to take care of the worms because they are basically like pets. You have to feed them and you have to give them water and food. <laughs> yeah, just share that with me and I can definitely be, be sure to give that information to students. And then just one other thing too that uh, I did share with Letty, and I don't know if she shared the email, but there's a, a contest going on for um, a composting art, art. So it's the International Compost. Every year they have an awareness week. And uh, right now they're taking submissions for um, artwork basically for them, like the winner we'll have the poster for next year's uh, Awareness Week. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I can go ahead and share that again to your email students. Um, if you're not receiving those emails, definitely let us know. Um, I have been sharing them to your student accounts. Um, and, and, and if they let in if they want to come and see the garden and take more wor worms they can always email you and you email us and then we can set a, an appointment and they can come and pick up more worms or if they just want to come and tour the garden they're more than welcome to come great thank you yes students definitely take advantage of that i'm going to be sharing your guys's contact information if that's okay estella and darlene yeah. Um, and then also keep in mind too in the future, I know Salinas Valley Recycles does offer internships for when you start your college careers. Um, and that, you know, it's, it's a lot of learning and, and hands on both in the office and out of the office. So if you guys are interested in jobs that aren't just in an office, I mean, there you go. It might be a good fit for you. Yes, for sure. And then uh, Darlene just shared the compost um, website for the poster contest. So if you guys wanna just copy and paste that to your browser, you can go ahead and do that and see all the details for that. Yep. Um, but moving forward, we do have more coming up for you guys. We will be learning more about Alba Organics next month. So, um, and that's uh, the organic farmer training program that we have locally. So th can I have all of you guys say thank you to our hosts? If you want to just quickly unmute yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
You're welcome. We're glad that you joined us. Thank you for your attention and uh, hope that you enjoyed the, the presentation, even though you didn't get to watch the whole video. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, teachers, for being here as well. Um, if you have any additional questions, you guys can always send me an email. I think we're right. going to close out for the day. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for everything. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Um, in the beginning, when we were doing introductions, I think you forgot to call me. Oh my goodness, Thomas, I apologize. Can you, do, would you like to introduce yourself to Estelle and Darlene? Uh, yeah, my name's Tomas, and I go to Alisao, and I'm a junior. Perfect. Thank you. Well, thank you for the introduction. Nice to meet you. Is Mr. Solis your teacher? He's great. I mm -hmm. like him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Thomas, did you get your worms? Yeah, I did. Okay, perfect. I hope you put those together and we'll see you next month, okay? All righty. Bye. Take care. Bye, Letty. All right. Thank you so much, Estella and Darlene. Yeah, I'm gonna, thank you. <laughs> maybe we can do like a little follow-up. Um, yes, maybe. please. And, and because we don't even have cameras, so I was thinking maybe we should have different... I don't even know what we need, but we should explore something that is more... Instead of carrying a computer, I don't know what else. Like a GoPro? Yeah, something different that we can make it better for students. But we're learning. This is our first one, so. Yeah. And you know what? Uh -huh. Students are very patient with us, um, and they have been 